All right, guys, top of the morning. Happy Friday. Coming to you feeling excited, coming to you fresh, coming to you as always with tremendous levels of gratitude for everything that we have to be grateful for in our lives. Like, look around you. There is so much to be thankful for. And we're on the precipice of sweater weather. And there's no other season of the year that I love more than sweater weather and hoodies and being able to be cold in the morning time. I tell you what, this is my favorite time of the year. However, today is going to be 90 out where I live. But nonetheless, I'm excited about this time of year and I'm excited for our time together today. So I'm coming to you from my kitchen countertop because I'm hoping that my router gives me the best signal sitting right in front of it. But without further ado, I'm going to have somebody take us out on the field. If you were new to Keep a Moving Group Coaching, what we do is we always have somebody take us out on the field. That's them sharing their sentiment, their thoughts, and really encouraging the team for greatness for the morning. So that person is actually going to be Liz Norton. Liz Norton, she just got back from the Oogie Boogie. Uh, down at, I know, I know, down at Disneyland. It looked like a great time. I'm excited. So Liz, I'm sure you're filled with excitement and you had some great time with your niece. So hit them with it. What's the sentiment? What would you like the people to hear on this beautiful Friday morning? Let's go. Oh my God. I don't know. I'm so damn tired. <laughs> I just have to say that's... also like shout out to parents. I'm not a parent, but every time I hang out with my niece and my nephew, I'm just, I don't know how y'all keep it going. I don't know how you guys sleep. I don't know how you guys parent. Like, I don't get it. But shout out to all of you guys that are hustling because I don't think my brain's working. <laughs> that. It's a lot, right? Yeah, it's a lot, a lot. So um, first of all, shout out to you guys that are working full time out there hustling all the time and coming home and parenting. You guys are like, the MVPs of life <laughs> winning. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of like the market and everything, I've actually started to notice, um, you know, my, my market's Oakland, Berkeley, and things are really slowing down. Things are not like, it's not close. Uh, time on market is very long and which is great. I think it gives buyers a really good opportunity to have more negotiation power. Um, and, and honestly, I don't know how much longer this markup of like, or markdown of like 20 to 30% and, and homes going exponentially over asking is going to last. I've actually started to notice that it's not going 20 to 30% over on some of these homes. It's maybe going at asking or like 10% over. So I think that's really great. Obviously, we're seeing more inventory, which is also really awesome. Um, but yeah, I, I really think we're kind of shifting maybe into like a little bit of a buyer's market out in Oakland, Berkeley. Good. I, I love it. I love it. And, and and I think that it's very pocket specific, right? It's super neighborhood specific. There's yeah. some neighborhoods that we will we probably will never see that decline. Um, and there's areas where, you know, it's it's a moving target. So I appreciate that. And welcome back. I'm glad that you were able Thanks. to spend some time with your niece. Does she live down south or is she up here? She lives in Vegas. So I had to fly to Vegas, pick her up, then fly to Disneyland and then fly back to Vegas and then fly back last night. So Oh, dang. I'm looking for an auntie, too. That's a super <laughs> aunt. I love that. I love that. So my uh, my nephew, I have, I have a couple, but my closest nephew to me, he's 21 years old. Every time I touch down at home in San Diego, the very first thing I do is Mexican food and I pick my my nephew up. No matter what I'm doing, where I'm going, where I'm staying, he'll pull he'll have the pull out sofa. He's with us the whole entire time. And I know that he truly, truly appreciates it. I took him to his first uh, dueling piano bar when we were in San Diego, and he absolutely loved it. And I got him up on stage for him to do a little dance, and uh, he got you know a little prize from the piano players. But I that, that. that I, I appreciate that. All right, guys, let's go in. And, and I have a conversation that I want to have with you guys. I was inspired by some people in our environment. Um, first things first, I, I want to give a huge congratulations to Melody. Melody's on the line, Melody Cleone. Uh, and and the reason why I want to bring this up is it's all about manifestation. I don't care uh, about our friendship. We have a friendship outside of business, and it really doesn't matter. Here's what matters, and and, and it's yeah. I'm going to give glory where glory is due. 
manifestation is real and i'll say until i'm blue in the face mel's been saying she wants to get on stages she wants to speak she's a contributor she's a connector you guys can see if you follow her she does those things and so um she actually just got the word yesterday she got some really good news and so mel um i, I don't want to share all that news if if you have an opportunity to share uh because it goes right into my conversation for the morning mel what's the good news if you want to share with everybody i'm going to put you on the spot right now <laughs> well you can share um but uh, yeah, so I just got picked to lead uh, as a moderator at EXPCon in Miami next month. And so I'm leading a general session, a, pan uh, a stage of 25 panelists. And um, it's the first time that I've been asked to speak on such a big stage. I, according to Elias, it's one of the biggest stages of the year. I personally have never been to EXPCon, so I don't know how big we're talking here. But um, I'm pretty excited. I'm for sure nervous. Uh, I don't even know, you know, what I'm going to say or if I'm going to stumble, you know. So um, I, I'm really excited that this is something that I've wanted for a really long time. And um, I'm just really happy that I'm going to be there alongside Elias. And just e even to be given an opportunity like this is like so humbling. And I'm so, so grateful for it. And I take it really seriously. So um, yeah, that's, that's what happened the other day. Yeah. Super, super pumped for you. Super excited. And listen, you guys, if you want to get on these stages, you're going to have to be persistent. You're going to have to raise your hand. You're going to have to ask and ask and follow up and follow up and follow up. I literally did the same thing. And like, we were both waiting, like, are they going to let us know? Like, are they going to let us know if we're, we're speaking at this event? And so, I'm fortunate that it's happening for me, but I'm, I'm fortunate that it's happening for Mel and other people. And the reason why I bring this up is that I want you guys to really ask yourself, and let me go back to my notes here. What is one opportunity that you'd like to create for yourself? And when you think about that, you guys are all public figures. You're all in public roles. Some of you might be more quiet than others, and that's okay. Whether you're introverted or you're extroverted or you're somewhere in between, it really doesn't matter because there's probably something out there that you're aspiring to do, a stage that you would like to speak on, a podcast that you'd like to host, or maybe that's local. Maybe it's a community event that you want to be a part of. Maybe it's running for city council. Maybe it's speaking at the release of a new development in San Francisco. I I don't know what exactly that is for you, but I want to encourage you guys to, to write that down and say, what is one opportunity that you'd love to create your, for yourself, whether it's public speaking, community affairs, whether it's a conference, whether it's hosting an event, whether it's speaking at your kid's school, whatever that looks like for you, I want to, to encourage you and inspire you guys to really look within yourself and saying, how can I make this happen? And it, the only way that you're going to make this happen is by reaching out and putting your name out there. Because if you're persistent enough, I promise you, great things will come. And so let me just open it up to you guys. When you think about this, what's an opportunity that you would like to create for yourself in the coming weeks, months, years, so on and so forth? What is that? Does anybody have something that they're like, you know what? I want to do this. I'll share one with you guys. For years now, Inman Connect has been in Las Vegas. They do it every single year. But at the end of the day, if you've been to Vegas for a conference, you've been to Vegas for a conference. It gets played out. It's large. You're walking. It's, you know, it's just... There's so many other great places to hold a conference. Well, Inman decided that they are going to move Inman Connect to San Diego next year, which I am super excited. That's my hometown. So I got on a call with the president of Inman two weeks ago about ideas of what they can do to really make that an amazing event. Tony Hawk is going to be one of the keynote speakers. I told him to lean into like the lowrider community, the Hispanic community, like really get entrenched into what, what represents San Diego and that reggae culture, the music and the beach and the vibe and the atmosphere and all these things. We had this really cool conversation. Well, in that conversation, I told him that I want to be considered as a speaker. I want to hit the main stage because when I left San Diego in 2004, I was in the gutter, literally living on the streets. And to fast forward 20 years from now and to think about who I've become, you guys, my family, everything that's happened in my life since then, I 100% want to be on that main stage and share that story. And so I sent him a video and I'm just like you guys. I sent him a video 
And I sent him a video to every single, I'm not going to play the video. I just sent him a raw video yesterday. I was in uh, Brentwood. And, sorry, I'm not going to play it. But I was in Brentwood yesterday and I sent them a video and I said, I want to be on the main stage. I want to be a contributor. I want to help you plan, prep, prepare, whatever I need to do. It gives me an opportunity to be there, speak my you know, value. Also, be able to be there and have my mom in the same city as me and come to this event. And so I shot my shot. And they responded back. They're like, absolutely. We want to get you involved. You know, we'll keep you part of the planning and the ideas. And I, I feel that there's tons of opportunity for you. The reason why I'm saying this is that we have an ability to create our own path in this business. Each of you, when I hear your guys' presentations, when you guys speak on these calls, when you guys are creating your videos, when you guys are doing your property tour, there are so many things. So I wanted to open the room up. And I want to ask you guys, if there was one opportunity that you want to create for yourself, it's a stage, it's an opportunity, it's a moment, speaking on someone's podcast, what is that? And I'm going to give you guys an opportunity. And here's what I'll do. I'll do anything that I can to, to support that, whether it's sharing the post or say, hey, send an email on my behalf or throw my name out there. Just let me know. Like, if I can, I will. Is there anything that you guys want to create right now in your life and business? And is there an opportunity you want to create for yourself? Thoughts, ideas, throw your hands up there. I'd love to hear from you guys. Please don't be shy. All right, cool. If I thought Blessing's hand would go up, so Blessing, let's hit him. As soon as you were like, you, if you wanted to shoot your shot, like where would it go? Um, it's no no surprise that like I'm all about positivity and mindset and growing through things. Um, I actually have already started the outline of the book that I want to write, but I would absolutely love to be a guest on Lisa Bilyeu's Women of Impact. Oh my goodness. Women of Impact podcast. Um, it's not real estate related, but like every person that's on there, they go through struggles and you look at them from the outside and they're just the most amazing women. I would absolutely like love to like get my, get my story, get my path to a place where I could be a guest on her show. All right. So, so what does that look like? I don't know who this person is, but what does that look like? And, and what can you do today to get you closer to that opportunity? What can you do today? Now you, your book might not be ready. You might not even have the title, but what can you do today? Blessing to get you one close, one step closer to that. I think it is to just start writing and like visualize myself on the couch, talking through the story, talking through the outline. Um, because it, I have, I have the title, I have the outline, but it's more so the, I guess it's, ooh, you guys know I'm never speechless. Um, I guess it's the courage to be bolder than I have. And if I'm gonna go one step further, um, it's to just be bold and keep showing up as I have been. Let me ask you another question, Blessing. Do you have to have a finished product to be able to sit on that couch and have that conversation with her? Oh, I don't know. I haven't even asked the question. So probably starting there would be a good first place to start. Yeah, I, I personally would find whoever runs the PR, whoever runs it, if she's on social, if she's on LinkedIn, and I would just send her a message. Right. Just start there. Right. You can't send her a video on Instagram if you guys are not friends because she won't be able to view it. But shoot your shot. Right. Like this is what I aspire to do. I was asked in a coaching environment today, what's one opportunity that I'd like to create for myself? Or what's something I aspire to do or be? And my thought was or my my contribution was I want to be on your show or I want to sit on your couch and have that conversation. Shoot your shot. That's one thing you can control today. And then then if it is that important to you, work your ass off and 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 be so persistent about it that they can't say no to you. Like they can't say no to you because you have just been so persistent, but I love this for you. I absolutely love this. Who else you guys share? What's one opportunity that you would like to create for yourself in the coming weeks, months, and year. And I don't want you to think small. I want you to think big. All of you guys have an opportunity. So anybody else, anybody else like to contribute on the conversation and don't leave me hanging. I know you guys have dreams, aspirations, and goals. So please share. Let's go. Brandy Alfonso. Okay, so I've been actually recently, uh, I've been wanting to do a podcast. Um, so I've been creating space for that. And my daughter is super excited. She's like, can I be the first one on your podcast? I'm like, sure, 
why not? You want in? So now, like, seeing her so excited, I'm like, I, I have to do this. Like, I just spoke it out loud to my child. And for one, I'll, I'll never fail myself. And for two, I'll never fail my child. So um, that just set myself up right there for a win. Um, so actually, it's funny, as this week, I did a um, a reel, and then I posted it to a story. And by doing that, I highlighted, like, what my podcast was going to be called, but nobody knew that. But me just putting it out there, just told myself, like, I'm manifesting this. I'm putting this out there already in the world. It doesn't matter if anybody knows what I'm talking about. Um, uh, like, that, that was my step into that. Beautiful, beautiful. So what can you do today to better support this opportunity in this this goal that you have for yourself? What can you do today? Today, um, reach out to people that have done podcasts and to uh, know what my steps are to actually put it in place and plan a schedule. All right. So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to, after a call today, I'm going to set up a text thread with you and my coach, Raquel. Uh, she has an amazing podcast. It's called The Raquel Show. It does very well. I've spoken on it a couple of times. She has a great way of asking questions and the flow and then the delivery of the content on multiple verticals. I'll make an introduction today um, to you and Raquel. Feel free to pick her brain. It is a great resource for you. And I think that you'll really appreciate uh, her as a human being in general. So I'll make that connection today for you. Thank you. All right, Vernon, big dog. Let's hear it, my man. Let's let's hear what's going on. What's one opportunity you want to create for yourself in the coming weeks, months, and years? Yeah, man, that's a great question. And um, you, you've heard this before, Elias, but for me, it's speaking on stages, man. I want to create a lane that I doesn't that I don't think really exists right now where where it ties in criminal justice reform into our business and how you know the opportunities that this business can afford. Um, those who you know, I, I still haven't carved the lane out completely, but it's 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 a tie in between criminal justice reform and and our business. And yeah, that's and, and speaking on stages about that, bro. Um, I think there's a message. There's a population of uh, people who um, need to be exposed to what's possible through this business. And, I, I, you know, that's 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 the lane right there. Wow. And, and you guys spend some time with Vernon. If you haven't heard his story, I'll let you guys or let him share his his story. There's some deep roots in this. And, and, I, and I think that there's there's a huge audience out there for you, Vernon. So what's one thing that you can do today to get you one closer to this opportunity, one step closer to this opportunity for you? Well, today I need to, uh, today I'm going to be uh, door knocking for my open house this weekend, but um you know i think i'm doing it coach um you know, i'm in the coaching spaces um i have my feet in both you know both pockets if you will um you know because i i truly feel it's a lane that hasn't been quite paved yet i don't really have a clear direction on you know the proper the steps to take to manifest that i think i'm just I don't know. I don't, I don't have, a, I don't have the answer. So here, here, here's an idea for you, Vernon. I don't think that I've ever heard, or maybe I have, but recently the correlation with the criminal justice reform and real estate and being able to create your own path and being able to have an industry that despite our past, we can go and create this empire for other people. Right? Like, I think yeah. that there's, you know, series there that shares like here's the things that that I've seen and been through, but here's what happened on the other end of all of that adversity. And I think there's some really powerful content there. And I think that I would sign up for that. I'm sure other people would sign up for it. And you find people that say, you know what? I needed to hear this message because there's hope for me now. Right? People go back into that lifestyle because they don't have any hope. They don't have any hope. You could be right. that vessel vessel of hope for people so i love it i i love this for you vernon anything i could do to support let's go to me and bledsoe what is your thoughts on this what's one opportunity you'd like to create for yourself in the coming weeks months and years uh another long-term goal but doesn't have to be that far off is just to release more books um i published a testimonial of sorts in 2018 and uh it was really just a brain dump of a lot of things that I went through, so it ended up being like 600 pages of a lot of shit. 
and now I've been working on a more condensed uh, testimonial for like four years now, but I just can't seem to get over the hump of finishing this this second offering. But I mean, the goal is to to publish and write as many offerings as I can because books are are super important to me. So I just want to pass that down and leave that trail behind me. I love this. So let me ask you this, Demi, and what type of relationships do you have with other authors right now, publishers, people that are doing and have achieved exactly what you want to achieve right now? Um, a handful. Like I know a, a handful of authors in the same position that is self-published. My mom is, is self-published four or five books herself. Um, and a few people in my community, but I'm just, uh, I'm not really surrounded by a lot of people that uh, have much to do with the literary space. All right. So, so two people I want you to reach out to and feel free to let them know that I told you to reach out. So I want you to reach out to Maha. She was one of our guests. She recently dropped a book, the seven, excuse me, seven rules of self-reliance. She is doing this whole campaign across the United States and beyond really promoting her book. And then Renee Rodriguez, he wrote the book Amplify and does all his courses on Amplify. Now, just let them know that you are in the writing space and you are an author yourself. And if there's any tips, ideas that they can lend to you, um, let them know. I told you to reach out, man, and hopefully that helps. But they're really amazing people and they are doing exactly what you want to do. So Maha and I appreciate Renee Rodriguez. That. I yeah. wrote it down. Thank you. Thank you. All right, cool, you guys. So really good stuff. And the reason why I wanted to bring this up, I, I want you to be clear on this, right? We're going into the new year in a couple months. You guys are all aspiring to do bigger things. I don't know about you guys, but my dream is not to be where I'm at in this seat doing what I'm doing five years from now, right? It's, it's not my dream. Now, it's part of who I am. It's part of what I'm doing. But there's other things that I will do in this industry. And there's other things that I will do in life. And so I want you guys to think that I don't want you just to sell a shit ton of real estate. Now, that's good. And that's going to serve a purpose. But thinking down the road, like, what does that look like for you guys? How can you get on different or, or or get different opportunities, get on stages, build something, build something that is not necessarily reliant on you only selling real estate, right? And that's the opportunity you have being in this business and being a public figure. So I want you to think about that. I want you to dream and I want you to truly, truly think about bigger than what we are doing right now. You all have a voice, you all have an opportunity and you also have venues all throughout the Bay Area if you're just wanting to start local. If you want to put a group together, host an event, throw something, you guys are welcome to use any of our offices to do that, to help build and support the dreams that you guys have. Any questions, thoughts, contributions on this subject? And Elijah, good to see you back, big dog. All right, cool. Awesome. Uh, Trinity, good to see you. Trinity is joining our team. She's from uh, Northern California. I think Oliver, you introduced us to Trinity as well. I'll get a nod from Oliver. I think he can hear us. All right, cool. I think his audio is a little slow. Okay. Here's what I want to do. Yeah, is I... No, I did. I did. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Your audio is a little spotty, but I appreciate you, big dog. Here's what I want to do, you guys. I want to share something. With... Sorry. Go ahead and mute yourself. All right. Thanks. Uh, hold on. Let me just mute him because his audio is not coming in. All right. Cool. All right, here we go. All right, so I want to commend you. And the reason why I want to commend you guys is that we just launched a new program. As you guys know, it is called Shiloh AI. Now, what Shiloh AI does is that they are a, it's an AI tool. And what it does is it listens to all the calls. And I want to commend you guys because in just the last three weeks, through this program, you guys have recorded 1,400 calls. Now, what does this mean for you guys? This means that now you have a true, true catalog of tape that you can go back and listen to and say, how well am I performing on the phone? Patrick, I'm going to call on you for a quick second. You and I had a one-on-one -on -one the other day, listening to your calls, going through some of your dialogue. What was a couple things that you heard about your flow, your dialogue and from those calls and what are you doing to get better? Let's just go to you, Patrick, because this is an opportunity for everybody and I'm beyond excited about this. Let's hear from you, Pat. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm also super excited about this new program. Um, 
think about this. It's like your own personal sales coach. For me, I've never had any sales training ever, you know, stepping into one of the biggest sales industry, right? And so for me, when I when me and Elias um, look back into uh, some of my previous calls, one thing that I noticed is I need a lot of honing into the way I deliver my speech. I need to disregard ums and likes and I have these got you filler words and whatnot like cool you know all that stuff I need to fix that and also you know I realize my strengths which is discovery right um, understanding what they need all the motivation and whatnot but one thing that I definitely lacked on and need to improve on is something that I have done yesterday I actually implemented it is having directions the steps forward like hey okay I get that how about this? I'm going to call you blah, blah, the baton pass, as you would say, right, Elias? And so that's something that I've been keeping in mind. I mean, I have it on my posters everywhere in this office, you know, pass the baton, pass the baton. So, I mean, that's just one, one session. So you guys can imagine that, that if you guys keep doing this every week, you're only going to have so much sauce when you guys are talking to everyone. So, I mean, I'm excited for it. I, I, I just signed up next week for another meeting. So, I mean, it's recommended. Love and Pat. Here's the thing, guys. Each of you have the ability to watch tape. If you want to get paid like a pro athlete, which each of you have the ability to do so, then you need to train and develop your skills like a pro athlete. And one of the best ways for you to do that is to be humble enough to look in the mirror and listen to yourself and be able to be like, wow, do I sound like that? Do I really come across that way? And, and imagine it this way. Imagine if you made your calls through follow up boss, right? That's how we record all these calls. And you record your negotiation skills with the listening agent. What type of questions did you ask? Where did you get resistance? How did you break down their walls? How did you get transparent information? And then go back and listen to that. Like, ah, these are the key things that work for me in my negotiations. Now I can get better on my negotiations. When I originally call somebody, somebody that was looking at a home six weeks ago that's been kind of idle, how did I re-spark that conversation? How did I call old leads that had been in the market eight months ago and the interest rates have changed and their payment could potentially be 200 to $500 less now, how am I having that conversation? When I get resistance to somebody about signing a BRBC, how am I addressing that? Well, right now you guys are doing the best at self-analyzation. And I promise you this, that's only works to a certain degree. But if you're not stopping and listening, listening to how well you perform on the phones, you guys, you're missing a huge opportunity. So I want to encourage everybody that is on the team to make calls through Follow Up Boss. And if you're not on the team, get yourself a way that you can record your own calls. And I don't care if that means that you set up an old phone and you just hit voice record as you're sitting there in your office or house or wherever you are making calls. Listen to yourself. And I promise you guys, you're going to find out some really, really great things about how well you perform on the phones. And it leads me to this. Be very conscious of your tone and the way that you say things to consumers and to other people. Listening to the calls that allows me to have huge insight on areas of opportunity and polishing points for every single person that records a call. So I want to play a little or do a little exercise with you right now. Princess, I'm going to just call on you because you're right in the center of my screen. So Princess, I'm going to have you take yourself off of mute really quick. Um, Vernon and I were talking about the language or excuse me, communication and how it's broken down. When you think about nonverbal communication, when you think about body language, when you think about tone and when you think about words, does anybody know the percentage of communication that is made up by actual tone? Does anybody know that? And if you don't go ahead, Lisa, what is it? It's something like more than 50%. Tone, it's, I think it's about 20%, but 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 I hear you. I, I think what you're on to is like body language and nonverbal cues. But yep. So 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 if tone is half of this or or a huge fraction of this, I want you guys to be mindful of this, mindful of this. And I also want you to be mindful when you're on the phones, when you're in communication, when you're delivering messages. If you are using your hands to deliver a message, the hand movement is in direct correlation to the words that come out of your mouth. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to go back and watch some presidential debates, none of the recent ones. What I want you to do is I want you to go back in time and I want to watch, I want you to watch some of the iconic presidential debates. Go back and watch Clinton. Go back and watch JFK versus Robert Nixon. Go or, or um. Go back and watch George Bush. Like, just go back and watch some of these. 
when you hear them speaking, the if they're speaking from the heart, they're here. If they're speaking from the mind, they're here. If they're opening up their dialogue, every single thing has an attachment if they're using their hands. So it is really important how you guys are expressing yourself and how your body is moving through all of your expressions. Now we can go on and on about this because it's something that I'm truly, truly excited about, but it's also something that I've studied, something that I've read about, something that I've spent time and time, but I wanna make it very simple for you right now. Princess, as Americans, we have a phrase that we say, and sometimes we don't really care, but we say it anyways when we meet people or when we call someone on the phones. What's this simple phrase that most Americans say that we don't necessarily always care about the answer? What is the one phrase? Do you know? No. <laughs> it, it's it's no, three no. words. It's three words. Oh, how are you doing? Just say, how are you, right? <laughs> right. So, Ashley, thank you for catching this. How are you? Now, I, I when I lived in Tahoe, I met a bunch of people from Poland. They come on work contract every single year. 4,500 Polish people come to, to Lake Tahoe. And then during the other season, all the Brazilian people came out and Argentinians. And so you get to learn about the world. They say, you Americans are so funny that you ask, how are you? Because we don't ask that because if we're going to ask that we truly want to be concerned about how are you right so we don't ask that so when i thought about this this morning i wanted to keep this very very simple because communication is everything so princess i want to ask you how does this feel when i ask you this good morning princess how are you i'm good how are you good right. so let's just pause there so how does it feel um, I think it's just so conditioned that like I was expecting to hear how you yeah, and so <laughs> yeah. no, keep going, keep going. I'm just reading the comments. Someone um, said routine. Yeah, routine. Um and like I feel like when we when we say it, you don't actually like you say it just out of routineness. So you kind of just push past even wanting to hear actually how they're doing. Because then you probably are going to get that short response. Of, oh, I'm good. How are you? Great. And, and awesome. then you can get thrown off if somebody actually starts to really open up and tell you everything. Because then you're like, oh, wait, I wasn't expecting that. So. All right. So how are you? It is three letters, but let's play a little game here. Hector, I want you to ask Princess, how are you? But I want you to emphasize the middle word. And I want you to like really emphasize that middle word. So you ask Princess. Princess, how are you today? She smiles. Yeah, believe me. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, that one, I think he emphasized it to where it's like, you really have to... I don't know. Something about it, though. It did make you like, oh, OK. Uh, so so stay with me on this one. So, so Melody, I want you to ask Princess how she is, and I want you to emphasize the you. Princess, how are you? It's more sincere. So, I yeah, feel so, like so, it reached in a in point. It's, it's more it's more. It's more involved. And, and you guys, I, I'm just really keeping this simple. Princess, how are you? Great. Wonderful. Just calling you back. You know, I told you I'd call you back on Friday about that house on 123 Main Street, right? Or, hey, Princess, just following up with you. I noticed that your production's been slacking lately. I wanted to have a conversation with you and see what I could do to help, right? So how are you? Right. How are you like, like, tell me a little bit more. Like I have some sincerity in my voice and my hope is that I'm going to get some sincerity back from you. How are you? Like, how are you? Like, that means like that person's really concerned about me. And if you ask it in a way that is more focused on the tonality versus just saying, hi, how are you? Good. Wonderful. Me too. Awesome. Like, but are people really okay all the time? Are people really dealing with stuff and it's just great? No, like, Princess, how are you? No, like, really? Like, how are you? Now, if I can get to the truth with somebody, then I can actually have some important dialogue with somebody, right? Tom, when you say that, what does that mean to you? 
When you say that you're not interested in buying a home, why do you say those words, right? What do you mean by that? Like there needs to be some tone because sometimes when I'm listening to calls, it's like this. What, what a phone call needs to be, there needs to be an inflection. There needs to be a reduction. There needs to be emotion. And this is how it should swing. Your conversation should be so rhythmic, but you have to be able to be conscious of the way that you ask questions to people, the way that you phrase conversations, the way that you emphasize certain words to give you a different response back so it doesn't feel mundane. Mundane conversations go nowhere and there's no depth. Conversations that truly have depth because they have rhythm give you a different type of response and elicit types of responses that you really, really want to get to. Nobody wants to have a surface conversation. And the, hi, how are you? That's a fucking simple conversation. That's why Zillow doesn't want any of us to ask a consumer, hi, Tom. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm fine. Just get to the point. They don't really care. But when you genuinely care, when you genuinely can have a person feel that you care through your words, the propensity for you to get farther in that conversation, get an appointment, have them give you real information, that's going to go higher and higher and higher. So I thought about this this morning because I've been listening to a lot of calls and I want you to be conscious of the way that you guys deliver information. And is there a rhythm to your conversation or is it just like this? Right? Can people can people hang on to your words? Hector, can they hang on to your words? Because you brought them in, you made a statement, you made them think, you made them stop, you slowed down for a second just to see if that's something that meant something to you. Like you guys, it is so powerful, so powerful. So I want to leave you with that or give you that because it's really important that you guys focus on the tone. And a great way for you guys to be able to analyze this is to make calls to follow a boss. I promise you this exercise will make you better. You're either going to run towards it or you're going to run away from it. And I want to encourage everybody, since you're here for keep it moving, that shows me that you really want that accountability. Make your calls to follow a boss. I tell you what, you guys, it is a powerful, powerful exercise. Any thoughts, contributions, and, and, and Princess, and Hector, and Melody, and whoever else chimed in, Lisa, thank you guys for your contributions. Anybody have any feedback or any insights or any contributions on this conversation right now? I see smiles, but I haven't seen any hands go up. So anybody have any thoughts or contributions? All right, so let's go. I will go Lisa and then we'll go Blessing and then we'll go Pat. Hi, I have been trying to definitely not have like a super monotone um, pace, but then I also noticed that my pauses are way too long. So yeah. thanks for <laughs> thanks for pointing that out. Um, and I know, so, so, and so I, just have, I have to think about it, like push it out, Lisa, push it out because people want to move forward. And for me, I, I sit there and think about wanting to say the perfect word and say the perfect phrase and it takes too long. So I'm trying to do much better. Lisa, I'm really glad that you raised your hand because Lisa and I listened to a couple of her calls the other day and she has a client that is just kind of tentative, right? He's tentative with the way he makes decisions, the way he moves. And I don't know, just listening to the three minute call, this person needed guidance. But what was happening on the call is that tentative was being met with tentative. Well, I don't know about that house or that neighborhood. And then the tone from Lisa was like, well, I, I don't know either. And that's that's what was meeting. Right now, I get mirroring and matching. But in this case, and I told Vernon this last time we were at the, the wine place, the person that has the most certainty in a conversation is the person that is going to have the most influence. Let me say that one more time. The person that has the most certainty in a conversation is the one that is going to have the most power in that conversation, the most persuasiveness, and they're going to be able to have the most influence in that conversation. So if somebody else is tentative, they just need some certainty. Tom, I could hear it in your voice that you're still a little uncertain. Here's what we're going to do next. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. And we're going to do this. Makes sense? Wonderful. I'll see you at two o'clock today. And that's what that conversation needed. And so I appreciate you, Lisa, like chiming in. Go ahead. So one more quick comment. So that happened again last night because we're looking at another property and he was on that same flow. And I went ahead and took more control. 
and he's willing now to write an offer. So you guys, there, there's people that are leaders. There's naturally people that are leaders in this world, but there's also people that are naturally needing to be led. That, that's just the way humans are wired. That's the way that we are wired. So be conscious of that. And Lisa, thank you for chiming in. Let's go blessing. Then we'll go Pat. Let me hear from you. Blessing. I was, I was laughing in, initially because I remember, a, I remember a sales training that my corporate team did. And as the administrative lead, I sat in not necessarily for the sales team, but to support. And obviously I had to participate and the results of my tone. Um, the moderator said, you're giving RBF with your words. And I'm like, oh, resting bitch face for those that don't know. And I was like, my words matched my demeanor in that. So it's been something that I've been very aware of that I do tend to have a harsh tone or a harsh look at things. And it does take very conscious stepping back and realizing, um, you know, everything that you say has impact, which you can't overthink it, but you just always have to look at like, why are you in the situation that you are? What's the goal? And if you come from like what the goal is, the person and the interaction doesn't really become that irritating. It's more like, I just want to move us through and let's, let's get to where we're going. And I can, I, I hope the RBF tone has, has gone away. Um, but that was the thing that. All right, but hold on a second. Let's just do a quick survey. Cause you know, I love surveys. <laughs> All right. How many people feel an RBF tone from blessing? Just put an emoji up or a hand up. All right, cool. How many people feel a caring and concern type of tone when blessing speaks? Like we bring life to the words that we speak. I was 17 years old, slanging long distance on the AT&T network, 1997, the biggest call room that you'd ever seen. And at that time, I knew nothing what I was doing. It was my very first sales job other than selling drugs. This is my first corporate, you know, real sales job. And I remember this girl coming along to all of our cubicles. Mind you, you had a cubicle, you had a thing like there. Hey, how you doing, Tom? It's Elias the student calling from GLD group long distance, all this stuff or whatever the pitch was back then, 97. And she brought us all a mirror, okay? She just brought us a mirror and wanted us to hang it on our cubicle. And, you know, every sales meeting, they would start hundreds of people in this room and we all had to smile, exercise this and like get up. And he's like, we weren't allowed to make calls like this. Hey, Tom. Hey, Tom, how are you thinking about switching your long distance? Like we weren't allowed to. Your shoulders had to be up. Your head had to be up. You had to have excitement. There's fucking music and people are jumping around like it was exciting. But through that excitement, the people felt that it. it's kind of like the 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 stock market right imagine all the noise and commotion that's going on people are excited and the consumer's just like this sounds like a hot deal i don't know what's going on but i need to get involved in that there's so much of that that goes into this if you don't feel like making calls you need to have a checkup from the neck up. You need to get yourself in state. You need to change it. You need to move around. You need to have some coffee. You need to get ready, get pumped up, listen to a podcast, and then get ready to make calls. You should never go into a call situation be like, oh, now we're doing this. I fucking hate it. Great. Right? It's the wrong atmosphere. It's the wrong mentality. You have to make sure that you have preparation. God, I love this conversation. Blessing. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you no longer have the RBF tone. Let's go, Pat, and let's go, Hector. I love that. Before before my calls, I do the little, like, uh, Jimmy, uh, you know, that little, yeah, the, the weatherman kind of thing, get myself in the zone. You know, I got to smile. Not you got to have a smile. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, one thing that I took away from this, um, this meeting is, you know, I love the beginning of this coaching, you know, it shows we how we separate from real estate. And it just shows how much this group of people care for each other, and love to see each other grow and see the success that we were all looking for. Um, and going to the calling um, regarding the call sessions and whatnot. Before I'd be scared, you know, I'm scared. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if I'm doing this right. But going to the coaching sessions about my calls, I'm excited to hit the books because I know what I need to do better. And I know that's going to work, you know. So with that, like, it's just kind of like, oh, I learned a new move in basketball. I can't wait to try to sound the court. So like, that's one thing that I just wanted to say. So go to the coaching programs, you know, and it's going to it's, it's definitely going to boost your, your business. So Pat, for the people that were obviously not on our one-on-one, what was the three-step formula that you and I went 
over that you've already implemented in your calls? Three steps. Three steps. formula. Discovery, confirmation, and what else? Discovery, Remember? discovery uh, retention, I think is what it's called. And then the no, other discovery, one. discovery, confirmation, and what was discovery the last confirmation. one? Confirmation and hold on, sorry, my notes. <laughs> it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. Hey, logical conclusion. Boom. All right, well, AKA the close, right? So think about it. discovery. <laughs> I'm asking great questions. Discovery confirmation. Hector, I want to make sure that I heard you correctly and I didn't miss anything. You said this was important, this was important, this was important. Hector, did I miss anything? Wonderful. Here's what we do next. Discovery, discovery confirmation, and then logical conclusion, AKA the close, the next steps. Perfect, Patrick, appreciate you. Hector, contributions on the conversation. Let's hear from you. I just want to say you too. That's so refreshing to hear. Patrick, your energy and like enthusiasm with doing this. Like, I love seeing that. So keep going, man. Um, So I just want to share, you know, one thing I hate and I will roll my eyes and you will feel it in my words and tonality is when I'm speaking about something to my clients and then they cut me off in the middle because they want to make their point and I'm just like, and I cringe and sometimes I can't come back from that and you will hear it in my voice that I know I'm just like, well, I just fucked up because they heard me like roll my eyes in my, in my tonality. So I'm working on that. And I just want to share, I'm glad we talked about that because lately that has been a thing, especially with your life, but rates are... You know, I'm going to wait on rates and in the middle of me explaining something in my tonality, you know, it's up and down and I'm, I'm I'm enthusiastic. And then they just like cut me off. I'm just like, don't do that to me. I get so angry. But that's what I'm working on. I just want to share that that right there will get me and I will lose my my flow. But I'm working on it. <laughs> so this is a great reminder. I love that people can feel the sassiness when they, right? I can't but hold it back. <laughs> here's everything comes down to to framework, right? And and I want to give you some simple framework here. So Hector, we're about to cover a lot of information in a very short amount of time. And I want to make sure to share all this with you. Now, you might be inclined to want to interject in the conversation. Let me just have you guys do me a favor. Hold your questions until I get through each section. I'll leave some space for you guys to address any questions or concerns. Sound good? All right, cool. And now well, I totally if set the stage, but they still do it. All right. Well, then you need to be firmer with them. <laughs> you need to be fucking firmer with them. But you know what? There's there's times where, hey, Tom, uh, you know, I'm going to get to that. We'll table that. But let me get back on track because I do not want to miss this conversation or miss this point in this conversation because it's super important. And, you know, you're you, you know how to control. You are a leader no matter what. But, yeah, some people are just rude. Some people are rude. You know, so once again, say, one my culture, it's a culture thing, too. Okay, are, are, is that is that like Hispanic? Mm-hmm. <laughs> It'll be like in full blown sense. Be like, ah, it's okay. I'll be like, sir, I'm trying to <laughs> calm down. <laughs> so then right, I so, so, I do the apologize for interrupting thing. Like you know, I say it very nicely, and then and then I continue. But it like at some point, I'm just like, I'm just gonna let them talk. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, uh, hopefully we could, you know, work on framework and just letting auntie and uncle know Theo and Thea that, hey, uh, you know, Hector speaking here. Let's not interrupt. So good stuff. Anybody else have any thoughts or contributions on the conversation? All right, cool, you guys. Listen, you guys all have an ability to watch tape, whether or not, you, whether you are recording yourself doing Zoom calls, whether you are listening to, here's a great way to, to, to analyze yourself. Go back and listen to your videos, right? If you've been creating videos for a certain amount of time, go back to early, early blessing, early, early Patrick, and listen to your videos then. And now analyze your flow now. I promise you, if you've been doing video consistently, your cadence, your flow, your hook, your rhythm, everything has gotten tremendously better. But you have a body of work that you can analyze. The same thing with your phone calls. That's why recording your consultations on Zoom call is super important. Now, do I like the in-person consultations? Yes. But would I prefer to do a Zoom presentation? 100%. Why? Because I could record that. Now I have something I can go back and analyze. So find ways to analyze. And what I want to do is I want to encourage you guys, if you need that additional support, just get on my count calendar. We'll do what I've been doing with Patrick and with, with, you know, with Lisa and other people in our environment here to support you guys and find the nuances. And sometimes it's not even me finding the nuances. I played it for Patrick. I said, Patrick, what did you hear? And what would you do better? He's like, oh man, I heard this or I heard that. It's, it's, it's an eye opener. And like I said, that's that mirror for you guys. So as we wrap session, a couple of things that I want you guys to get prepared for. 
for the coming months. We are walking into fall season. There is so many things going on. People love fall season. Now, I'm not telling you go on your MailChimp and send out that fucking weak ass, you know, pumpkin spice latte recipe that you've been sending out for the last six years. Nobody fucking cares. Go to Starbucks and get a fucking pumpkin spice latte. Your loaf of bread that you make every single year that is pumpkin based. Okay. But here's the thing, you guys. What is going on in our environment? Where are the pumpkin patches? Where's the Half Moon Bay Festival? What's going on at Half Moon Bay Festival? Like, think about all of your content that you're going into walking into October, trick or treating, trunk or treats, all of these things. So when you guys are building your fall season, when your fall activity lists are coming out, when the color scheme has changed to this orange, yellow and brown tone, when you're putting out your newsletter, I want you to be conscious of these things. You guys have an opportunity the next three months to absolutely crush the amount of content that goes out to your consumer. Consumers. In December, we're going to do 12 days of Christmas. It's going to be action items every single day for 12 days that give you something to do in December. You have Thanksgiving, you have month of gratitude, month of thanks, you have October, you have fall. So I want you guys to start planning it. Why? Because I want you guys to have an enormous Q3 or Q4. And then I want you guys to walk into 2025 feeling yourself feeling yourself because you did so much in this last couple of months because i'll tell you what we have an excuse we have a reason there's so many amazing things going on that you guys can create so i want you guys to start planning that and next friday when we come back together i want you guys to come correct come here and share with me share with them share with your brothers and sisters what does that plan look like for fall what are you guys doing How are you going to put people on game? What happens in the fall season for the daily city market? What happened last fall? And based on last fall, what can we think that may happen this fall? I want you guys to be planned, prepped, and prepared. Be proactive, not reactive. You guys have the ability to do so. Think about your content. Think about where you're going, trunk or treats, all these things. So let's come back tomorrow, or excuse me, next Friday as we talk about action. And let's talk about that. Do I have the commitment that you guys are at least going to write down some ideas and come to this space with ideas to share for everybody? Cool. Let's do this. I'm going to go around the room, get a couple key takeaways from some people that are on the call. I'm going to go back to Ms. Sloan. I don't want to butcher your name again. What's one key takeaway from our time together? And thank you for being a guest today. One key takeaway from our time together today. Yeah, and I appreciate, you know, you letting me come on here and see how you guys are. It's um, different from what I come from. Oliver and I were on the same team previously. Um, you just a lot of, I really like how you talk about, you know, the tonality with the calls. Um, previously, we had somebody say, like, you just have to have a neutral tone throughout the thing. But I didn't really agree with that. And I, I agree with you how it needs to be up and down. And, um, you know, that was a big takeaway on when I make my calls to be, you know, aware of that and then to go back and listen to it to kind of see where I need to improve on and touch on um, in order to be better on my following calls. I love it. And, and for us here at Keep It Moving, it's just different. It's just different, right? I pride myself on not being your average everyday run-of-the-mill coach that is KPI stats and figures. This is this is heart-centered and we cover a lot of information here. So I appreciate you being here. Thanks for being a guest. Let's go to Trinity and then Otis, I'm gonna have you close session today. So Trinity, brand new to the team. She just uh, joined us, but Trinity, what's one key takeaway from our time together today? I think it's the same thing as Guinan because there's been a couple of times where I've listened to my calls and I'm like, oh my fucking God, do I actually sound like that? And then I, I realized for me, it's definitely about how I'm feeling mentally before I make the calls. Because sometimes I have no problem. I sound super good. I book a lot of appointments. And then other times I'm just super anxious and nervous. And I, I've told myself, I don't know if I need to start meditating beforehand or go do something active and just calm the hell down or what. But there's sometimes where it just sounds like shit. Well, <laughs> and, and I appreciate that. Like, and you got to think about that. Like, would I want to talk to me? <laughs> would I be engaged in this conversation? And I appreciate that. You guys, peak states don't just arrive. You have to demand that of yourself. You guys, hundreds and hundreds of keep it moving sessions that I've done. 
Every single time, it is the same routine, mental process, and the same pump up every to get me in state, to get me in state. I, I sit here and I watch people get in the waiting room and I'm filled with anxiety. I'm filled with angst. I'm filled with excitement. Oh my God, what's this going to be like every single time? And we do this three times a week, you guys. So peak states don't just arrive. You got to demand that shit of yourself. And you have to be conscious of that every time. Oh, dog, let's go to you. Take us off the field today, my man. Um, closing words, takeaway, and then a closing sentiment for the group today. Closing words is take what you learned today. I mean, Elias said, I think it was a couple of months back, and he really ain't really said every once in a while, why the fuck do we come here? We come here to get better. So take what you learned today. Take with the possibilities of the endless potential that we all have. Look at what uh, Elias was saying from the first time when he said he wanted to be on him. And now he's already made that relationship to where he can call the president and figure things out and give his advice. So you, uh, you yourself hold your own power and don't get in your way with that. What I learned today, um, you know, I'm someone who's always active and raising my hand today. Sometimes it's good to not raise your hand and listen to other people, give other people, you know, a platform you know, to, to put their do's and don'ts out there. And then it's fucking Friday. Go get your money. We got uh, we got an endless amount of ammunition. Uh, I've loved the new AI tool because as I'm talking, I'm really good at running the mill right off the brain, but it gives you highlighted points where you can just pick off and pick up on that. And um, me and Jacob have been doing a good job. Over the last 30 days, we booked about 40 appointments. Uh, so, you know, all off calling something I didn't really like to do cold calling, but you know, one of my things is I've been top producing for a while, but I can go past that threshold. If I get back to the basics, what I've been saying I was going to do for a long time, but I'm actually doing it now and I'm seating the results. Um, contracts have been written, be beaten out times, but I have like four or five contracts going out with multiple agents on the team. So leverage your partner leverage your information and let's go kick ass and get some more contracts and start shattering more records. Like we do guys. Love this. I love this. Listen, you guys, have you, and I'm going to let you out of here in just a moment. Have you ever been on a call and you're like, damn, I was in state. I was flowing. I said some great stuff. They said, yes, let's meet up tomorrow. Or I got over a tough objection. Imagine being able to have that record. Be like, hold on. I got to go back and listen to that. I'm writing that down. That is a phrase that I could put in my flow for next calls and make me even better because we've all had those calls where we were just on. Imagine being able to bottle that and imagine being able to keep that as a resource. Say, hey, you're thinking about joining our team. I'm going to share with you what I've been able to learn. Here's some of my calls. I'm going to sponsor you into this amazing world called EXP and I got your back. God, you guys, it is fucking beyond powerful. So go out there, fresh your day. Thank you to our guests for being here. If you're interested in learning about what a relationship with us actually looks like and formalizing that, have the person that invited you here introduce you to me, and I would love to have that conversation with you. As always, keep it moving towards your dreams, goals, and vision, and go out there and crush your open houses this weekend. Peace.